Hello and welcome to this lecture on invasive fungal infections in the ICU. You have already heard the diagnostic approaches of these infections by Dr. Chakravarti. I am going to emphasize on the treatment strategies of these invasive fungal infection, predominantly invasive candidiasis. We were lucky to have a plethora of antifungal agents which have developed over the years. The story started in 1960s with the development of amphotericin B. In 1970s, ketoconazole and 5-flucytosin was developed. In 80s, there came the era of fluconazole and itraconazole. In the 1990s, liposomal amphotericin B came in the market. In the 2000s, boriconazole and the newer azoles like isovuconazole and different iconocandins like caspo, mica and, pos and anidula fungin came into the market. Now these different antifungal agents works at different sites of a fungi. For example, 5-fluorocytosine, a meta anti-metabolite works at the DNA. The azoles work at the cytoplasm. The polyenes work at the cell membrane and the iconocandins work at the cell wall of the fungi. The azoles inhibit the cytochrome P450 enzyme which is responsible for synthesis of ergosterol. The polyenes bind directly to this ergosterol in the cell membrane and it causes holes in the cell wall with complete lack of permeability and disruption of the fungal cell wall. The iconocandins, they bind to the beta-1,3 glucane synthase enzyme, thereby disrupting the synthesis of the fungal cell wall. So the various antifungals works to different mechanisms and at different sites of the fungi. Now it is very important to know the sensitivities of the different candida species to different azoles and the other antifungal agents. As you can see, Candida tropicalis and Candida albicans, which are most common in our country, they are usually sensitive to almost all the azoles and iconocandins and amphotericin B. Those